Let me start off by saying that there are times when injectable steroids make sense and can provide a lot of pain relief and a rapid reduction in inflammation for the recipient. And then there are times when it is a terrible disservice to the patient. Today, we are going to be diving into the scientific literature and the good, the bad, and the ugly, the truth about steroid injections. My goal is to help all of my listeners make a more informed decision. Whether you are the patient or the doctor practicing medicine, let's open up the conversation about the actual tissue damage that happens when we put corticosteroids inside someone's joint. Before we get going, let me also say that it's not your fault. Doctors are trained to do these injections and they believe in all honesty that they are doing benefit to their patients and following the standard of care. So let's just look at the literature, let's open up a conversation, and let's explore whether or not the corticosteroid injection is the best option for your condition. If you're someone who's looking for a trusted source of information on ways that you can better address joint pain naturally, or you're a health professional who's interested in research-based natural medicine and ways to increase your profitability and grow your influence as you help your clients heal even faster, then please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell right after that so that you're notified every week when we release new content made just for you. I'm Dr. Brandy Rose Lipscomb, and I've helped thousands of individuals across the US reduce joint pain, improve their strength, improve their mobility, and get back to enjoying an active lifestyle all without drugs or surgery. First of all, let's look at two questions. What is a corticosteroid, and why would a doctor want to inject it into my joints? Corticosteroids were first developed in 1948 and have been injected into human joints since 1950. So cortisone turns into hydrocortisone once it's been metabolized by our liver, and hydrocortisone is identical to the hormone cortisol that we release from our own adrenal glands. Cortisol gets a pretty bad rep because it is the major hormone that we produce in response to stress. And in today's day and age, we deal with a lot of chronic stress. What does cortisol do? One of the first things it does is it increases the amount of glucose that is available in your bloodstream. This is not a great idea when you're trying to lose stubborn belly fat, but it's a great idea if you are in starvation mode and your brain needs glucose to survive. Cortisol is also our get up and go hormone that wakes us up in the morning and gets us ready to go seize the day. It would, can also help elevate our blood pressure if our blood pressure is getting low because we always need to keep pumping that blood with the glucose in it up to our brains in order to stay alive. Cortisol also works as a powerful anti-inflammatory by decreasing the migration of certain cells known as monocytes and leukocytes, part of your white blood cell, your immune system, decreasing their circulation into the injured and inflamed area. In my office, I often describe the inflammatory process as a little bit like that scene where a cop car pulls over a little old lady and she has a last name that's the same as some international crime boss. And so the cop gets on the radio and asks for help. And all of a sudden you have 15 cop cars, three different fire trucks, the police chief, uh, four FBI and 10 CIA all bearing down on the scene. And it's a, you know, a a little old lady with an unfortunate last name. When we have an injured area, we will have something called chemotaxis. That's basically like a chemical signal that signals all of the white blood cells and the macrophages, the neutrophils, the leukocytes, and the prostaglandins, all the inflammatory mediators that create this big inflammatory swollen soup inside your joints. Cortisol stops the radio call for help. It stops the migration of those inflammatory mediators like prostaglandins, histamines, and antibodies into the area. 
So when we realized in 1950 that we could isolate and manufacture this compound, it seemed like a no-brainer that we could do a lot of good to stop that inflammatory response in joints. However, the steroids that we utilize today in modern medicine are often way more potent than what is made by the body. So remember, hydrocortisone is identical to cortisol, what your body makes. And then we have steroids like methylprednisone and triamcinolone that are four to five times more potent than the hydrocortisone. And a step further, we have in steroids like betamethasone and dexamethasone that are up to 50 times more potent than the cortisol that is made by your own body. And so a win for mankind, right? We isolated this cool compound that has this really great anti-inflammatory effect and then we amped it up so that it's 50 times stronger than anything our bodies could make alone and now we're gonna inject it into a bunch of people. Well, sometimes that can be beneficial. And let's go over a few of those cases right now. Steroid injections can be really helpful in cases of acute bursitis, tenosynovitis, even tendinitis, frozen shoulder, and carpal tunnel syndrome, and epicondylitis of the elbows. If it is possible to have a one and done scenario where one receives one steroid injection, the inflammation is rapidly reduced and then the body is able to heal itself fabulous. No real harm done in most cases. So what is the ugly truth about corticosteroid injections? Are you sitting down for this? First, let's take a look at the contraindications to steroid injections. Number one contraindication is a known infection in the joint. We've already talked about how steroids depress the immune system in the area, and so that's not good if we have an infection. And also, injecting anything into an infection where you're putting a needle in and drawing it out can increase the risk of spreading that infection through the body. Areas with known fractures are also a contraindication because corticosteroids can inhibit bone healing and they are actually can do some pretty nasty things to our bones. And we're gonna be talking about that in just a minute. But if there's any known fracture or micro fracture in that joint, corticosteroids are contraindicated. And the last big contraindication or big no, if you will, is tendons that are prone to rupture or have risk of rupturing. Uh, like the Achilles tendon. You might have heard of the Achilles heel rupturing. Lord have mercy, no one wants that to happen. Also, the patellar tendon between the patella on the front of the knee and then the lower tibia. Those two tendons are more prone to rupture and they're not good sites for injections of corticosteroids. And then we have our relative contraindications. And a relative contraindication means that it's probably not a really good idea, but you have to weigh all the factors and sort of figure it out yourself as a physician if you're willing to take that risk. And those include uncontrolled diabetes, because like I said, cortisol increases our glucose levels. When we inject corticosteroids into the joints, we can raise our glucose levels for weeks. If someone has already had two corticosteroid injections into an area with no improvement, that is a pretty good sign that a third one is not going to be the best medical decision making. The other relative contraindications include osteoporosis of the joint or brittle bones and anyone on blood thinners or anticoagulants. And now for some of the really ugly truth. First, let's talk about what's pretty. Our cartilage is pretty. Our cartilage has cells called chondrocytes, and the chondrocytes sit in a matrix of collagen and protein, and they can make more collagen and protein, and they provide that nice gliding surface between bones so that we, we can glide, we can run, we can move with ease, and we can move in a pain-free fashion. 
When we inject corticosteroids into the joint space, we decrease the protein and matrix synthesis within the cartilage. The hyaline, which is one of the structures that sort of helps the matrix of the cartilage stay, you know, nice and, and firm and in its space, the hyaline becomes lumpy and the collagen fibers start to clump together. And the chondrocytes, those cells that sit in the cartilage and help us make more cartilage, show changes in their cell shape. Cytotoxicity, meaning like the, the cell has toxic effects and isn't working as well. And even a much greater rate of cell death, meaning we're killing the chondrocytes that are there trying to help us make more cartilage. We also see surface deterioration within the cartilage, including cartilage tears, pitting, edema, frays, and erosion of that cartilaginous surface. We see thinning of the cartilage and necrosis, which is a medical term that just means death across the board. And we also see an increased formation of cysts within the cartilage after corticosteroid injections. Osteoarthritis begins to worsen the minute a chondrocyte's function is altered. And it was a few years after doctors started giving corticosteroid injections in joints that they started to see cases of really progressive deterioration of the arthritic joint. And they started wondering what was really going on here. And so of course they started to experiment on animals. And one of the first things that was noticed was the rate of chondrocyte death was twice as high in a joint that had been injected inside the joint with the corticosteroid versus someone receiving corticosteroids intramuscularly. And of course, it was noted that the um, more cortisone injections that the animals received, uh, the more fissures and degradation of the cartilage that occurred. In one study done at University Central Hospital in Helsinki, Finland, it was found that even one steroid injection was enough to produce a really deleterious effect, which is really bad, on the cartilage of the animal joints. They also discovered that the potency of the steroids made a big difference. And even one injection of dexamethasone into the temporomandibular joint produced significant articular cartilage, cartilage destruction, as well as a significant loss of bone. The guidelines put out by the American College of Rheumatology say that it is generally recommended, although not well supported by clinical data, that the injection of corticosteroids not be given more than three to four times per year in one joint because of the risk of progressive cartilage damage. And then we also need to talk about the effect of the corticosteroids on the bone itself. We have an increased risk of fracture, an increased risk of osteoporosis, and an increased risk of osteonecrosis, which means death of the bone cells. It's super ironic, isn't it? A procedure that is done all across this country and all across the globe even for joint pain, yet it's known to cause more joint pain. What's really going on here? Well, for one, a lot of physicians read articles like this one that talks about how steroid injections can be good for your patient and good for your profitability. I really like the recommendations from this radiologist that points out that it is really important to get excellent radiographic images of the joint before someone is injected with corticosteroids to determine if there's already bone loss and if there's you know, issues that might indicate that someone would have a worse response to corticosteroids than a better one. And perhaps an even better idea, here's a study from 2020 that showed results after one year where the two cohorts were either receiving steroid injections or physical therapy. And the ones receiving physical therapy received a better score on having less pain and more improved quality of life and more mobility at the one-year baseline. 
So like I said, whether you're the injector or the injectee, it's not your fault. There's so many papers out there that still support the idea that corticosteroids relieve pain and that they're a good idea. So hopefully this video has made you think a little bit and you'll explore some of the alternatives that could be more beneficial to the body in the long term before we think about corticosteroids as the first line of treatment in joint pain. There are lots of ways that we can stimulate the body's ability to heal, nourish the cartilage and the bone within our joints and achieve outstanding outcomes in today's medical world. If you wanna see some of the ways that we like to help our clients at the Pain Eraser program, you can click on see more in the description and follow the links to register to learn more about the programs that we have for home users, the general public, as well as for health professionals using a type of technology known as dynamic neuromodulation. And let me know in the comments, have you had an amazing experience from a steroid injection? What about have you had a really bad one? If you're looking for some inspiration on what to try next, perhaps check out this video on the three keys to longer lasting pain relief. And if you'd like to learn more about what we're doing inside of our programs, you can click on this one to learn more about how dynamic neuromodulation outperforms attends. Thanks for watching. Wish you optimal health and true happiness. See you soon.